on Madden Football. Summer drawing to a close here in the southeast. The roof is closed at the wondrous Mercedes-Benz Stadium due to the hot temp still outside here in downtown Atlanta. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, happy to be with CD as we get the the folks at home something to keep their eye on the running game for both teams because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned old-school type of a game physical who wins up front who runs the ball the best and controls the clock they will come out the victor started now the kicker Chris Boswell and we are underway from Atlanta Cordero Patterson to return it bringing it out of the end zone and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20 so here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time and they will be let out by their second year quarterback and you know how scouts always talk about checking all the boxes I think this young man does exactly that when you're looking for an NFL quarterback. Proven leader, teams went 43-6 and six while he was in college, has speed, dual threat ability, and production off the charts while he was in school, and also did a nice job of limiting turnovers. When you put it all together, there's a lot to be excited about for this young quarterback. Now a first carry here for Robinson. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. But you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Second down and a yard. Ritter from the gun. Wide open receiver complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 17 yards and a first down for Atlanta. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game. Be evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards. More than that, second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. No score after one on EA Sports. Atlanta second quarter action. The Falcons with the football. As they've got it second and seven. Ritter with it after the play fake. Short throw to Smith. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense. So that you can have people around the ball when it's caught. And you don't give up much run after the catch. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. So the Steelers' offense getting set for their first drive. 
They'll be led out by a third round pick back in 2018 out of Oklahoma State. It's Mason Rudolph. And when Mason Rudolph is on the field, sometimes the scouting reports have to be revised a little bit because often quarterbacks like to throw short to get a rhythm. For Mason Rudolph, he loves the deep fade and he loves the deep post pattern. Anything over the top, those are his favorite shots downfield, and that's what gets him comfortable. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the gun, here's Rudolph. Throw left side, going to be taken in by Harris. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Here's Rudolph. Setting up the screen, Harris. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Here comes a first down throw from Rudolph. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. So a good first down call as the screen play gets him nine. Good call there on first down. And Brandon, I'm getting better over the years. They're not screaming out screen, screen, screen with my defensive training. They want to keep those pass rushers honest. And they did so there, and they wind up picking up positive yardage. Rudolph throwing again. That's caught. Allen Robinson. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. From the 10, first and goal. Rudolph now to throw. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Now Rudolph. protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Six plays got him down here. This is play number seven, third and goal. Again, it's Rudolph. And that's incomplete. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Boswell's kick is good. And we have action on the scoreboard just before halftime. It's 3-0. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And the Falcons now are going to go on offense late in this first half. 
With his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half, we'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. Now Ritter to throw on first down. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. Second down and three. Back to throw, Ritter. And complete to Drake London. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Ritter on first and ten. Timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. Kuhn knocks this one through the post, and that will tie us at 3-3. Three, three. So they're able to make things level just before half and also leave very, very little time on the clock. And I love the way that you phrased that. Brought a little soccer into it, and that's really apropos considering they just kicked a field goal to tie things up. Seconds, all that remains of this first half is the kick is away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. So we've hit halftime here, and as we expected, looking at the clock, a very quick first half of play. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Not too much to show you scoring-wise in that first half. Just a couple of field goals make up all the scoring. But I wouldn't be surprised if we're close to a breakthrough and things should open up as we move along. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter. It's been a tight contest so far. touchdown wins and a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line 
The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. Well, the first half, very even. I mean, really, in all facets, this ball game tied, Charles. So as we start the third quarter, curious to see what the second half brings us. Certainly am. I'm with you on that one. And we all know a lot of coaches from the NFL all the way down to the peewee level. They love to spin it to their teams. Hey, we're starting a brand new shorter ball game. It's all even. Let's go out and seize it. This is ours. A good start to the drive. Here's that's caught out on the left side. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A good pick up there, 26 yards. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now a first down carry for Harris. Now he's able to skip away from that first defender on his way to a pickup of five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. Out of the gun, Rudolph. He gets it left side to Johnson. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 29-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Running left, it's Warren. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Only a yard on the game there as time will run out on this third quarter of play. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. It's been a tight, low-scoring affair thus far. 3-3 is our score heading into the fourth. That's complete to his tight end fire move. And this will not get close to the first down marker as he's brought down at the 26. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This for the lead in the final stages. Boswell's kick is good, and they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Well, we still wait on the first touchdown of the game, but a second field goal now makes it a 6-3 score. Yeah, I know a lot of people would call this the definition of winning ugly. To me, this is gorgeous. I'm a defender, right? I love these kind of games. The tension is high. Who's going to make the play to win it? And right now, that field goal may be the advantage that they need. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. So now Ritter and the Falcons down 6-3. to three, A minute 47 on the clock. And they need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Huge play at this point in the game. 
Alex Highsmith making the nice play and getting the sack. Brandon, that's just football 101. If you're out of the pocket, you've got to get rid of the football in this situation. You cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill. Well, they'll come up now. This is second and long. Ritter wants to throw it. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Here's Ritter. London hauls this one in, and he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They were down to their final two plays. They needed something to get them started. That was the one. And it was a big one indeed, and so now they get a chance to continue to go downfield. Let's see if they go for a big one here. Final minute, one timeout remaining. First and ten. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Try again here, second and ten. Now Ritter. Well, this pass is caught by London. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 43. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Throwing now is Ritter. And a dump off here to Robinson. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. It may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. They'll come up now on second down. Ritter looking to throw it here. This one hauled in, and again, it's Robinson. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. Brings up third and four. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And his kick is right there. It's good. fortunate there that was leaking a little maybe leaking a lot but he got it yeah he actually was able to make it work how about the body language though right as he watched that ball leak to the right trying to try to bring it back in and had just enough to get it done So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. Four quarters not enough for all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled?
So possession and overtime first goes to the Atlanta Falcons, and we are back underway. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. I cannot imagine how these players and coaches feel, Charles. <laughs> My palms sweating up here in the booth now as we go to the third drive of overtime. And as we know from here on out, any points win this football game. I'll throw you a towel as well, partner. I've got one for myself, but let's face it. Our nerves, our pressure, nothing compared to what's going on on that field. Both of the field goal kickers active here early. Can one of them become the hero and end this thing? And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. Short game there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. So a big play in this opening drive of overtime. Now looking at a third and three. First throw in overtime comes from Ritter. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. First down, here's Ritter. That's caught by Pitts. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Now this throw caught left side. Another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 28. One overtime. How about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Go and play action. Ritter. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Dropped for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. And there they bring pressure from the inside, and they get home. Yeah, hard to block everyone, isn't it? And on this play, <laughs> someone did not get blocked. He's the one who got home. Overtime with two minutes to play. We are in sudden death, but still all tied up. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Here's Ritter. That's caught left side to tight end Pitts. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Ritter will set up to throw it. Incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to at least get him a lead here in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good. and now up 
to their defense to try and see if they can hold this one. I like how you framed it up because obviously this game is not over, right? They go down and kick a field goal, then we head to sudden death. But if the defense can hold, take the ball away, turn it over on downs, this game's over. So only a field goal on that opening drive of overtime. Will that hold up? We'll find out as the kick's away. Iguabuque to return it from his end zone here. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. Well, it's pretty simple now. They need a field goal out of this drive to extend overtime, or obviously, Charles, a touchdown to win it. Yeah, I'm taking the defense's perspective on this one, partner, because now they know with a three-point lead, they can afford to give that up because you just keep playing, right? The overtime gets extended. But if you give up the touchdown, it's game over. So on offense, every play you make, you've got to try and get just a little bit more out of each one in order to try and get to the end zone because they're going to play everyone back, keep everything in front. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Throwing here, Rudolph. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way, full steam, and he broke that one up. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Rudolph. is going to be caught along the sidelines. Probably shouldn't have been caught. He's going to lose yardage there. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Here we go on fourth. Rudolph. He's got Pickens complete and up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. That the definition of a do or die play, but they keep this overtime session going with a first down. Some big time drama as the game continues. They had to have that fourth down conversion. They made it work. And you and I have both seen play callers play sheets, right? And a lot of them look like, you know, menus at restaurants. <laughs> they always have a special section for those plays when you absolutely have to have a first down, a touchdown, a big play. They went to that section right there and dialed that one up. So from the 37, here's second down and eight. Now Rudolph. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. Rudolph throwing again. That's the fire move. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. They will snap it to Rudolph. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage.
Back to the air, Rudolph. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and two. They'll fake the handoff. Now Rudolph under a heavy rush, and down he goes. And go to the Bucs is a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Partner, the Mike linebacker, the middle linebacker, has so many different responsibilities. How excited do you think he was to get home with that blitz? Yeah, he wants a sack. He got it. Throwing on third down, here's Rudolph. It's caught on the right side by Robinson. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They wanted to avoid the dreaded fourth down and having to get a conversion or it being the final play. They picked it up, though, on third. I love how you described that because we've been in those situations and seen it. If you get to fourth down, especially in overtime, things get a little shakier, don't they? The hands get shaky, right? The throw, if you're going to throw the ball, being able to run it, all of that coming down to one big play, very nice of them and nice for them to pick it up on third. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Harris running straight ahead. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. zone now Rudolph and that one too high and incomplete after the incompletion here's second and ten from the 20 Rudolph. That's going to be caught by Pickens. And the Steelers are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Back to throw, Rudolph. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. They sort of got a new lease on life there. If he picks that off, this ball game's over. I can hear it. I can hear it. I can hear it. My defensive backs coach in Tennessee, a lost opportunity is never regained. Used to drive him crazy when I dropped those potential interceptions as that one was there. Harris. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now Rudolph. And this will be caught. It's a touchdown. An absolute stunned silence here as they have come in and stolen this one in overtime. And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full of confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn.
And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at EA.